Well, I think the, the, the thing it was that some of this dinosaurs, especially the brachiosaur in this, in this sequence, wasn't even in the cut when John saw it. Everybody was looking up at nothing. <laughs> you know, we had a large wire connected to a truck at the top of a tree, and we pulled the wire as if the brachiosaur was eating from the up, uppermost branches, and then we cut the wire so it would snap back again. That's what Johnny basically saw. They were looking at nothing. But of course, when he saw Close Encounters, they were also looking at nothing. So Johnny has scored a lot of movies where char characters not not seeing really anything until we suggest it through music or through special effects. Um, but, you know, John really uh, talked to me. I remember this very well when he first saw the picture. He talked about no the nobility of these animals. We never called them monsters. We never called them dinosaurs. We called them animals. This is a complete extinct ecosystem that was brought back through science and immorality and uh, which is part of the theme of the movie and of course in la later films everybody paid the price for that but um, John really wanted to put the dinosaurs where they belonged with the, uh, the same kind of sort of admiration and respect that little kids have when they go to a natural history museum and they see the relics of this era of this drastic or later Cretaceous era and they they're in awe of just the bones without even seeing the flesh on the bones. And I think John, like a kid, I, I feel like a, a kid scored this movie with the heart of a child that knew how to create a sense of wonder about these amazing, magnificent animals. So John, how important is music in making us believe the impossible? Mm. Well, I, I was sought after by saying that that music is is probably older than language that we before we could speak we would celebrate by moving or dancing or beating on a log or whatever or chasing our enemy to some frightening intervals that we might intone so music is, a, is an old old gift an old part of our humanity you know and the 12 tones are in nature you can divide them up uh, i recommend lynn bernstein's harvard lectures to anybody who's interested in in the relationship between language and music and the commonalities there. Yeah. And the theories of you know, you know, Chomsky at, uh, at uh, Harvard. Um, I don't think we know very much about it. A lot of it, again, is unknowable. A lot of it is acculturated. I mean, what the thing is, it's a beautiful, magnificent lyrical passage to us to somebody in another culture may not hear it the same way, but the intervals and the materials are the same to all humanity. And we end up uh, being told that maybe the common word that we share is mama. Hmm. Uh, and so, um, I've forgotten your question exactly, the direction of it, John, but I'm, I'm just going on about the, the effect of music on people. My question's irrelevant now. <laughs> <laughs> Never, John, you're always relevant. Let's, uh, but, but it is a, a very important thing in all of us, you know, when we're, sad, when we're grieving, when we're happy and so on. We don't know why. It's one of the unknowables. We'll, we'll come to that maybe when you get to AI. I think that, you know, there, there was, I was talking to someone, um, just a, someone was recounting a story about their, one of their parents who has Alzheimer's and, um, and often cannot recognize their own child's face, but knows every song they ever heard in their throughout their entire lives, and can actually talk about where they first heard the song if, if you if, if when the song is played. Special kind of, special kind of memory. Yeah, it, it seems yeah. To, we all seem to have. It's fascinating. Let's 